Hello everyone and welcome to my very first YouTube video. Today I am going to show you how to make a fiddle mat. Fiddle mats are great for people with dementia, neurological illness, sensory impairments, adults and children with autism, sensory processing disorder. They're also great for babies and kids or anybody who likes miniatures and nice colours. The benefits of fiddle mats in people with dementia is that they provide engagement that can be calming, it can prompt special memories, it can give a sense of usefulness and bring feelings of joy. This in turn can improve their mood, their self-esteem and help with social interaction. It can also help to prevent boredom and make them feel happier. The reason that I had found out about fiddle mats is because my partner's gran has dementia and she is confined to home a lot and confined to her chair. And I looked into, you know, crafts and things that you can make for people with dementia. And this is where I found the fiddle mat. I'd seen online that a lot of people had created their own variations. Not everybody used yarn or wool or crocheting or knitting. They'd use materials and different embellishments. So I will now show you what I made last year for my partner's gran who has dementia. This was crocheted on thick yarn and as you can see it had reflective fibres in it so when the light hits it, it reflects. I had also added things like her initial in there. Uh, she worked as a typist when she was younger so I added a typewriter and she liked baking so I put little miniatures like a uh, biro flower or a Torah. I also added in a little tea set. These are mainly just doll's house miniatures, um, things like roses and crochet flowers. Um, I also used uh, different fabrics such as organza, which you could see here, and these little tubes and things. Um, all of it is just different textures, different colours. Sorry, this video was taken a while ago on an old phone, it wasn't set up for YouTube, but you could get the general idea of all the little bits that I added. Now this is another fiddle mat that I made for my partner's grand for her Christmas and again I used the same type of theme. Um, I went obviously for kind of a Christmas type colour, I used Christmas yarn that had glitter in it. Um, I didn't put as much uh, items on this one, I also made it like a mitt so she was able to put her hands inside to keep her hands warm. I added things like pearls and love hearts and just little little embellishments and pom-poms. The reason that I made a second fiddle mat for her was because she liked the first one so much. When I gave her the first one, her face just completely lit up and she loved all the little items on it. The second one she also loved and she was able to keep her hands warm with that one because she could put her hands inside. And yeah, generally she really, really loved it. So I think it's a great idea. It could be used as a great gift for a family member or you can you know, make, th make ones for charity and put them into nursing homes and things like that as well. So I'll get started on how I made mine. I started off by making a granny square afghan type pattern. Um, I did a full square which measured 35 centimetres each way. This isn't something that you have to do, you can use your own material to make a square, you can also use a blanket or any form of material, you don't have to do crochet. I chose chunky knitting yarn for this in four different colours. As you can see with the white there, I had a white double knit in and I decided to turn it into a chunky by just doubling the strands up. You can virtually do this with any double knitting wool or yarn, just uh, unravel it and then double it up and it looks like chunky knitting when you've actually started to do your pattern. If you would like to make an exact replica of this or if you would like to follow the crochet pattern that I used, I will link this in the description bar below. I will now show you how we start our crochet pattern. If you are a beginner in crochet, it would be worthwhile um, looking up some beginner crochet patterns and familiarising yourself with crochet terms as I will be using quite a lot of these in this part of the tutorial. And if you decide that you're not going to use crochet for your design, then skip ahead to the embellishment section of the video. 
So I'm going to start by, and I'm doing this in slow motion so hopefully you can make sense of it, make a slip knot on your crochet hook. I'm using a 6mm crochet hook. So you make your slip knot and then you're going to chain 4 single crochet stitches. You now have your four stitches and you're going to make your loop. So you go into the fourth chain from the hook and you make a slip stitch with the first stitch that you've got there next to the hook and that turns into a little loop. And on top of your loop you're now going to chain three stitches. You then yarn over and create two further double crochets inside your little loop. This then creates three stitches. You then chain three single crochets and you then do your three double crochets into the loop again. We follow this pattern because at the end of this we end up with a little square. If you keep following the steps on the screen you will see that the square is now taking shape. Now at the end of your chain 3, line this up with the very first stitch and create a slip stitch. Now that your little square is made, we are now going to add in the new colour here. Something that I like to do is pull the little ends in from the first colour. Um, once you tie that off, you can pull that through with your hook to blend in. Now, I have shared the pattern below for the granny square. This is in written form. If I went ahead and explained the whole pattern on the video, the video would probably be about an hour long. <laughs> I'm quite a slow crocheter. So, check the pattern out below. As you can see, there is no end to this pattern. If you keep continuing, the square will just keep getting bigger and bigger. So you can make your mind up how big you would like your square. My square measures up to 35 centimetres across and lengthways. As I've now finished, I am now threading in all the ends, the tail ends from each of my rows um, or my rounds because we went in a round pattern. Um, I like to just thread them in and snip them. Now this next step is where I'm going to be creating a little loop for a button. So I just made a small chain um, of about 10 crochet uh, stitches and then I sew on and add a button in. The button makes it useful for when you're using it as a mitt. For our next step you need sewing needle, thread and a glue gun and your embellishments. The embellishment here is a little crochet uh, swirly loop. Then these tubes, these craft tubes are like metallic tubes. Um, I just tied one of these on. Then a little four leaf clover. Um, I just sewed that one on. And then I used my glue gun to put things like pom poms on and any embellishments that don't have loops in them for sewing through. 
and here is the finished fiddle mat so I'm going to talk through what embellishments I used here so we've got the clover which was sewn on we've got a little miniature which is like um, a Sunday roast uh, these craft tubes um, a rose it's just like an acrylic rose uh, that's an orange segment um, Tunnock's tea cakes um, a little cake made out of female clay that's got a loop in it a uh, pom-pom, a spindly loop, another pom-pom um, pearls and then we've got a vinyl bow that I made uh, this one's quite cool, this is like a female rose which I then put on a UV light reactive nail varnish and it changes colour when the UV light hits it um, with anything like this always make sure it's non-toxic in case people put this in their mouth now, the next thing is a little miniature telephone. Um, these are just little miniatures, like dollhouse miniatures that you can buy on eBay and things. Um, they're really good. They're quite heavy as well, so you have to be bear that in mind as well and always make sure that the pieces can't come off. Uh, this is just a button, another pom-pom, another button. Um, and buttons are quite good because, you know, you could play with them and pull at them and things and then these are just uh, further embellishments an acrylic rose and like a gem you can then fold over uh, your mat and tie the button and that's when it can be used as like a cuff or a mitt where they can put their hands inside again just with all of these things just make sure that safety is number one here <laughs> and uh, that you're not putting things on that can be f that can fall off or that are toxic and that you're not using things like toxic glue or anything to put them on because if someone puts them in the mouth you know you have to be careful with that and that is now the end of the video i hope you enjoyed watching this and i hope you will uh, enjoy recreating this if you do recreate please let me know below or send me your pictures or your videos that would be great um as i said before my uh, this is my first YouTube video and my editing skills are a bit questionable so I apologise for that. You would never actually believe that I have um, a digital media qualification which I got more than 10 years ago obviously. Um, so yeah, if you like the video please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.